And we're going to start reading in verse number 19. A uh, very familiar passage of Scripture here uh, that we're going to be reading from. And uh, a very familiar subject that I'll be preaching on here this morning. Uh, but I think that it's something that we need to be reminded of very often. And uh, because a lot of times I think that we can kind of uh, grow cold. We can kind of uh, just kind of go through the motions and, and just... Uh, just go through day-to-day -day life and not really even think about this, many of us who were saved. Uh, but the fact of the matter, there is a place called hell. Amen. Amen. And we as Christians, we need to be reminded of that uh, because there are people in this world that are headed there right now. Yeah. There are a lot of people in this world uh, that don't know Christ as their Savior. Many of them are your friends, your family, yeah. co-workers, classmates, people that you know. They're on their way to hell. And we need to be, as Christians, we need to be reminded of just how awful hell is and what's missing there in hell so that we can be encouraged to go out and share the gospel with every person that we can. Amen? So Luke chapter number 16, and we're going to start reading at verse number 19. The Bible says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in his flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us, uh, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that, uh, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my, father, to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I want to bring a message entitled here this morning, What's Missing in Hell? What's Missing in Hell? Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the good singing here this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, for our children and uh, how they're growing in the Lord. Lord, they're, they're, they're learning more about you and learning your word and, God, learning these songs. And God, what a blessing it is to see these young people growing. Uh, and God, I just pray that you continue to touch them and bless them and, and use them for your glory. God, thank you, Lord, for the uh, for the ladies' group singing here this morning and for that wonderful song that they sang. God, what a blessing it is to us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for all your many blessings. God, I pray that you help me now as I preach. Give me power and wisdom, clarity of mind, and clarity of speech. God, strengthen my voice here today. Help me, Lord, I pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody can be seated. Y'all bear with my voice here. Been sick all week, and uh, this will be the third time that I've preached this weekend. So, uh, y'all pray for me, and I uh, pray that the Lord strengthens my voice. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good here. All right, so what's missing in hell? I don't know how many times that I've read this passage of Scripture here in Luke chapter number 16. Uh, how many times I've read this passage of Scripture. And, uh, and we see a lot of the things here uh, that's taking place in hell, and we see some of the, the descriptions of hell. Uh, but as I was going through this, uh, I, I was thinking about what is missing in hell. And we see what's missing in hell right in these same verses. And so there's been many times that I've preached Luke chapter number 16, verses 19 through 31, and I've used that, preached about hell. And there's been different ways that I've preached about hell, not changing anything in the Word of God, but there's different directions that you can take. And I don't think that this is one that I've ever taken before, uh, but I think it's going to be very interesting here. And as I said before we read the Scripture, I know that as I look around the congregation here this morning, just about everybody here I, I know uh, has made a profession of faith. You have put your faith and your trust in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So some people would say, well, preacher, why, why would you preach a message about hell 
to a bunch of saved people. Well, I believe that Christians probably need to hear this kind of preaching more so than the lost. Amen. Because we need to be reminded, number one, what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. 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 I'm saved. I've been set free. I've been redeemed. Amen. I've been born again. My sins have been washed away. My name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hey, that's something we'll never get over. Amen. Right. If you've gotten over the fact that you're saved, there's something wrong and you need to get in the altar and you need to get it right with God. Amen. I'm glad that I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the day that I got saved. Amen. But maybe I am preaching the right crowd here this morning. Amen. Amen. I didn't give a one amen on that. Y'all wait this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all make it because I, hey, Last night they said I preached two hours. I can do that again here today. I still got them notes. Amen. I, mean, I still got them notes. Amen. I can preach on hell and, and transition right into something else. Won't bother me just a bit. Huh? I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Are you glad Amen. you're saved? Amen. Okay, that's what I like to hear. Hear Jesus. Make sure y'all are awake here this morning. <coughs> we don't have to go to hell. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to hell. Amen. Amen. I can't go to hell because I've been saved. Amen. Amen. Right, make sure y'all with me this morning. <laughs> we need to be reminded about hell though. That's the reason why that I preach a message like this this morning to a bunch of saved folks. It's because we need to be reminded about hell. Because yep. what happens to us as Christians a lot of times is we, 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 we feel so secure in our salvation <laughs> that we forget about other people. Right. And we forget that they don't. There's a lot of people in this world don't have the security of salvation the way that we do. Amen. Amen. And what's sad is, is there's a lot of people in this world today that have never heard a clear cut gospel message. And <clears throat> excuse me. What's What's even more sad is the fact that there are people who have heard a clear cut gospel message and they know the difference between right and wrong and they know that there's a heaven and they know that there's a hell and I've even talked to people who I, I asked them I said if you were to die today do you know where you'd go and I've talked to people and they'd say yes I know I'm on my way to hell and what's sad is is they just go on about their business mm -hmm. and, what's, and what's sad uh, for the average church today is that Christians go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and we know that there's a lost and dying world outside these doors. But we act as if we don't care. And I'm not saying that you don't care here this morning. But I think oftentimes we forget just how awful hell is. I want you this morning as I'm preaching, I want you to take that, take that one person that you know, <clears throat> that you care about the most, that you know based upon their testimony, they're lost and they're on their way to a devil's hell. I want you to think about that person as I preach every one of these points here this morning. I want you to think about them going through what I talk about here today and see if that doesn't change your mind about soul winning. If that doesn't stir something up inside of you to want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I realize by looking at the world today and looking at what's going on in our world and seeing the direction that it's going in, it breaks my heart to know that there are millions upon millions upon millions of people who are lost and they're on their way to hell. I mean, it breaks my heart. I tell you, there's a lot of people out there that claim the title Christian that I believe are lost and on their way to hell. They claim the title Christian, but they, they got a head knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel, but they don't have it in their hearts. Amen? Right. And it scares me to know that there's a lot of people in this world that's on their way to a devil's hell. And so we need to be reminded of some things about hell. What's missing in hell? Number one, there's no peace. There's no peace. Peace is missing in hell. I want you to look at verse number 23, if you will, here this morning. It says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. He was being tormented in the flame. There is absolutely no peace this morning in hell. That's right. <laughs> if we were able to cut a hole in the floor and, and peel it back and let you be able to look down into hell, what you would see, you would see thousands upon thousands upon thousands, even millions upon millions of people down in hell being tormented as we speak right now. 
this rich man that the Bible talks about here in Luke chapter number 16 verses 19 through 31 that rich man was in hell over 2,000 years ago and guess where he's at today he's still in hell and he's there and he's still being tormented he's still feeling the same pain that he felt when this story was pinned down he's still feeling that today and he will feel it throughout all eternity Amen. <clears throat> there's absolutely no peace in hell <laughs> I want you to think this morning about that person that you care about the most that's lost on their way to hell. Think about them having absolutely no peace in their life. <clears throat> this rich man here, look at verse 23 again, says, In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. I'm going to tell you this morning what the torments are in hell. There is absolutely no peace in hell. There's eternal darkness going on in hell right now. Look at Matthew chapter number 25, verse number 30. Matthew 25, verse number 30, the Bible says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you see that there where it says to cast the, unprof uh, cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness? There is total <laughs> darkness in hell. I don't know about you, but I, there's a lot of people who are scared of the dark. Most people are scared of the dark. Yeah. And the ones that say that they're not they are. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of things I, I, that I'm not scared of, but I'm going to tell you sometimes I'm scared of the dark. And I'll tell you why I'm scared of the dark sometimes. Now, I don't go around with a flashlight and, a, and, 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 a, and I don't have a, 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 a little nightlight in there shining. Sella puts one in there for her. I don't need it. I want it dark when I go to sleep. But uh, there's a... There's a But there's a lot of people that are scared of the dark. You know why? Because they can't see what's there. It's not so much the darkness that they're scared of. It's the fact that they can't see what's around them. And that terrifies them. <coughs> Man, I don't like taking the dog outside to use the bathroom in the dark. And I'll tell you why. Because I can't see where she pooped. But anyway, <laughs> I don't want to step in that. Okay? There's a lot of people that are scared. They're scared of the dark. And the reason why is because they can't see what's around them. Right. Could you imagine here this morning, I want you to look at that, there's eternal darkness. But not only is there eternal darkness, the Bible says there in Matthew 25 and verse 30 uh, that there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Could you imagine being in a place where it's nothing but total darkness, so dark that you can't see your hand in front of your face, and being here around you, <clears throat> thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people screaming out in pain and in torment. And that's all that you could hear. Amen. I, I enjoyed hearing the singing this morning. I enjoyed hearing the, uh, the, the talking and the laughter. I, I enjoy these things. But I don't want to be in a place to where all I hear is screaming. People screaming out in pain. Oh God, I'm on fire. Oh God, get me out of here. Oh God, help me. Why? Why am I here? Oh God, who's that over there screaming? Oh God, who's that person over there? Oh, is that somebody I know? Oh, what are they going through? Could you imagine being in that situation for all eternity? <clears throat> There'd be absolutely no peace whatsoever <clears throat> in your life. <clears throat> there the rich man found himself in a place of eternal darkness. He found, him, found himself in a place of weeping. People crying out, screaming at the top of their lungs, wanting out of that awful place, wanting, wanting some refreshment, wanting some relief, and crying out and wanting to get out, but they can't get out. The Bible says that there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's so much pain that they're grinding their teeth. I believe it's maybe not even so much that the pain as it is the anger at themselves. Grinding their teeth out of anger at themselves. Knowing that they heard the gospel. And knowing they had a chance to be saved. And knowing they had a chance that they didn't have to go to that place. And they were warned of it. But they chose to reject God's word. And now they found themselves in this place of no peace. A place where they can't get out. It's eternal darkness. If they're there, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at Mark chapter. Well, I'll tell you right now. Mark, I'll just tell you. Mark chapter number nine and verse forty-four talks about where the worm <laughs> dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. There's unquenchable fire in hell this morning. I don't care how Hollywood portrays hell. 
Hell is a real place, amen? And it's a place of eternal darkness. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place where people are in unquenchable fire. They're burning. Now, everybody in here this morning, I'm sure, at some point or another in your life, you've burned your finger, you've burned your hand, you've burned your arm or something. Imagine that pain multiplied by about a thousand all over your body and in your eyes and up your nose and down your throat and in your ears, inside and out, you're burning. And it won't stop. It's unquenchable. It will not stop. I'm glad I'm not going to have to go through that. Amen. I'm glad that I heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm glad that I heard that. And I'm glad that I accepted that. I put my faith and my trust in what Jesus has already done. But I want you to think about that person that you care about the most that's lost on their way to this place called hell. The world's looking for peace. Amen. <coughs> They're looking for peace in all the wrong places, though. Right. There's only true, true peace in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All the people in this world, they're seeking after peace in different things. But there's only true peace, and that's in Jesus Christ. True peace comes from Jesus Christ. One day, those who thought that they found peace in their, in their finances, those who thought that they found peace in their, in their possessions, those that thought that they found peace in religion, one day they're going to find out there wasn't true peace. Amen. It's going to come to an end and they're going to be in a place of no peace for all eternity. It's a turn plate. It's had uh, there in hell. What's missing in hell? Number one, it's a place of no peace. It's a place of eternal darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. An unquenchable fire is there, and they'll be there in everlasting punishment. Notice there in Mark 9:44, it says, "Where the worm dieth not." Do you understand what that's saying there when it says, "Where the worm dieth not"? We every every person that walks this earth has an eternal, never dying soul. Right. Now my soul has been saved and I'll be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity. Amen. Amen. But those who are lost, their soul will go down into hell and there their soul will burn and there will be no relief for that soul. And it, you know a lot of times when we, when we make a fire and we put wood into the fire, you constantly have to add more wood to the fire to keep the fire going because the wood eventually burns away to nothing but ashes. Your soul in hell, however, will not burn away. It will not fade away. It will only get worse. I believe this. I believe that when somebody dies, if you were to die, say John, this is for instance, say John was lost and he died in a car wreck and he broke his neck in the car wreck. I believe that when he's in hell, he'll be suffering the pain of that broken neck from the car wreck not on top of everything else that he's going through. I believe that. I believe that those that, that uh, whatever pains and things that they went through in life, they're going to carry them with them down into the pits of hell and they're going to suffer that pain for all eternity on top of the unquenchable fire. On top of the fact that they're in darkness and they're going to hear weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. It doesn't sound like a peaceful place to me, does it you? Number one, what's missing in hell? Peace. There's no peace in hell. Number two, there's no mercy in hell. Look at verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Number one, what's missing in hell? Number one, there's no peace. Number two, there's no mercy. You know when we can seek after mercy and receive mercy? Today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. If you're going to wait till tomorrow, if you're going to wait till eternity comes, it is too late. There is no mercy to be given out. Amen. That rich man was in hell and he was there burning and he's still there burning and he has yet to get that drop of water. There is absolutely no mercy for those that are turned into hell. Mercy is missing there. Catholicism has it all wrong. There'll be no buying people out of hell. You realize it? A lot of different sects of the Catholic Church, they teach that if you give certain amounts of money to the church, that you can buy people, buy pardon and mercy for people, and buy them out of hell. I don't find that anywhere in the Bible. Right. Come on, man. They also teach that you can pray people out of hell. 
I find that nowhere in this Bible. You see here in Luke chapter number 16, verses 19 through 31, this rich man, no doubt, no doubt, notice it says that he's a rich man. No doubt in his life, he gave money to different religious organizations, I'm sure. There's all kinds of rich people today that are not religious at all, but they give money to religious organizations just for that tax write-off. Okay? Catholic Church, they teach that you can buy people out of hell. They teach that you can pray people out of hell. But that's not the case. That's not going to happen. There is no mercy to be handed out in hell. And notice there that we've already read some scripture there. Matthew chapter 25, verse 30. It talks about the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. The screams of the damned will not be heard. The screaming, them, them screaming out to God will not, God will not hear their screams. Amen. There are millions upon millions of people in hell right now as I preach, screaming out, God, get me out of here. God, get me out of here. Oh, I'm in so much pain. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Get me out of here. Millions of people screaming right now those very words in hell. There's no mercy to be handed out. You'll not find mercy in hell. I want you to think about that person that you care about the most that's lost on their way to hell. I want you to think about them because mercy is still available today for them. Amen? They're alive and they're here on this earth. Mercy is still available for them today. Amen? They need to hear the gospel. They need you to go to them and tell them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up unto the Father but by Him. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way. They need you to go to them and share the gospel with them. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8, But God commits His love towards us even while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10.9, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They need you to go to them and share the gospel with them because mercy is still available for them today. Amen. But the moment that they take their last breath on this earth, <laughs> And they ascend down into hell. They descend down into hell. No more mercy. No more mercy. What's missing in hell? Number one, there's no peace in hell. Number two, there's no mercy in hell. Number three, there's no favor. There's no favor in hell. Look at verse 25. But Abraham said, Son... Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. That rich man had favor all of his life. Because he had money, he got whatever he wanted. Lazarus, on the other hand, he didn't get anything. <coughs> he had nothing. He was a beggar. But now the roles have been reversed. So we may not have anything in this life. The world looks at us Christians and they look as if we don't have anything. That's why they look at us. You know what? On, on their standards, they're right. I have nothing in their standards. But I have something that they don't have. I have Jesus Christ in my heart. Amen. Amen. And one day, when I breathe my last breath, I may not have nothing here, but I'll have it all there. Amen. Amen. And those that had it all here and reject Jesus Christ, they're going to lose it all yeah. and have nothing in hell. There's no favor in hell. It doesn't matter if you were the President of the United States. It doesn't matter if you owned uh, billion dollar companies. It doesn't matter uh, who you are, what you've done. It doesn't matter. There's no favor in hell. It doesn't matter what kind of good person you was here on this earth. You know, a lot of, <coughs> a lot of people... And this is sad, but there's a lot of people that are uh, firefighters and police officers and paramedics and doctors and nurses uh, that they go through their lives and they think that all the good deeds 
that they have done is going to get them into heaven. Hey, I thank God for these types of people. I thank God for those that are first responders. and I thank God for those that are uh, protectors of ours here at home and abroad. I thank God for these people. But their good deeds is not going to get them into heaven. There is no favor in hell. If they do not accept the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will die and split hell wide open. And they'll be there in the place of no peace, a place of no mercy, and they will have no favor there in hell. Amen. It doesn't matter who you was or what you did in life. Once you're in hell, none of that matters. What's missing in hell? There's no peace in hell. There's no mercy in hell. There's no favor in hell. Number four, look at verse number 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. There's no relationship in hell. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I like being around people. Yeah. I enjoyed yesterday <coughs> going down there to going down there to that fall rally yesterday. I enjoyed that yesterday. We got to go down there. there they had the cookout down there. They had all the games. There was, uh, it was mostly, it was just pretty much mostly two churches that was down there. Brother Billy's church, Bethel Baptist Church, and our church. And we had a great time down there. Had good fellowship with the folks amen. down there. Had good food, amen. Had a good service last night. And I enjoyed that. I don't like being by myself all the time. Amen. I don't like being by myself all the time. There's times that I like to be by myself. Yep. I think there's times that everybody ought to be by themselves every now and then. But I don't want to be by myself all the time. No. Could you imagine being in hell? There's no relationships in hell. If I was lost, and if Stella was lost, and we both died and went to hell, there wouldn't be no husband and wife in hell. I would know that she's there, but I wouldn't know where she was at. And there wouldn't be nothing that I could do to comfort her. Could you imagine that? Can you imagine that? These past couple of weeks before I got sick and Sel was sick, it was killing me. I, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to help her, but I mean, I mean that's that's in a, I, I think in a man's DNA you want to fix it, yep. amen. Yeah. And I couldn't fix it, and it was killing me. Could you imagine knowing that the person that you care about the most is in the worst pain that they can possibly imagine, and there's nothing that you can do about it, and you don't even know how to get to them to help them. There's no relationship in hell. There's no husband and wives. No husband and wives in hell. There are no brothers and sisters in hell. You're just there burning. Man, I, I love my brother. If we were both lost, thank God we're not. But if we were both lost and we died and we went to hell, I would know that my brother is there burning, but I don't know where he's at. And I can't get to him. And I'm burning myself. I'm on fire. And I'm being tormented too. Could you imagine Knowing that your family's there burning? Could you imagine not knowing where they're at? There's no relationship in hell. There's no family relationship. There's no friendship in hell. But not only that, there's eternal separation from God in hell. Amen. See, I have peace in my life today. Amen. In this world of chaos and despair, I have peace in my life because I know one day this life will pass away. And one day I'll stand before my Savior and I'll get to see Him eyeball to eyeball. And I'll get to hug Him and He'll hug me back. And I'll have relationship with Him. I'll have fellowship with Him for all eternity. I'll get to see the One who died for me. Amen. I'll get to see the, the, the crown of thorns scars upon His brow. I'll see the nail scars in His hands. I'll see the nail scars in his feet and I'll see the spear scar in his side and I'll be able to see what my Savior did for me. But to those who are lost and they die and they go to hell, they'll never get, never get to meet the Creator. They'll never get to spend eternity with Him. Eternal separation from God. There's no relationship in hell. See, a lot of people in this world that's lost and headed to hell, you know the reason why they're still lost? Many of them have heard the gospel. 
But the reason why they, they choose to reject the gospel is because of relationships. I'm afraid I'll have to give up this group of friends if I trust Jesus as my Savior. Y'all with me this morning? Yeah. Amen. I, I, I might have to, I won't be able to hang around certain family members if I were to accept Jesus as my Savior. A lot of times people reject the gospel because of relationships. And what they don't realize is, is they're going to give up all relationships yeah. when they reject the gospel and go to hell. Amen? I wish, people would, I wish people would think about that. What's missing in hell? There's no peace in hell. There's no mercy. There's no favor. There's no relationship. And lastly here this morning, number five, there's no answer to prayer. I want you to look at verses 27 through 31. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They are Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. There's no, no answered prayer in hell. Nope. And I'm glad that when I pray, here on this earth, when I pray and I talk to my Lord, He answers my prayers. Amen. 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 He answers. He hears my prayers and He answers my prayers. Amen. And I'm glad that when I meet Him face to face and spend eternity with Him, that it'll be He'll answer me because we'll be having conversation face to face. I'll ask a question and He'll give me an answer. I'll ask another question and He'll give me an answer. And you better believe when I get to heaven, I'm going to be playing the thousand question game with the Lord. I got a lot of questions I need answers to. Amen. And I'm going to get the answers to them. But those that die and go to hell, they'll be praying in hell. You better believe. You want to know where the most praying's at in this earth? It's in the earth. In hell. Yeah. Every person down there is praying. A lot of people that are lost and I don't believe in prayer. They're going to be a believer when they get into hell. The sad thing is it's going to be too late. There's no answered prayer in hell. They'll be praying for relief, but God will not hear their prayer. They'll be praying for forgiveness, but God will not hear their prayer. They'll be praying for escape, but God will not hear their prayer. They'll be praying for others who they left behind, but God will not hear their prayer. Amen. There's a lot of things missing in hell. Why would anybody want to go to hell? Yeah, I've heard people say that. I've witnessed to people before. And they flat out told me, I'm going to hell and I want to go to hell. That's crazy. Why would you want to go somewhere where there's a lot of stuff missing? There's no peace in hell. There's no mercy in hell. There's no favor in hell. There's no relationship in hell. And there's no answered prayer in hell. Amen. Folks, I know I look around the congregation here this morning and I see a whole lot of people who say they're saved and on their way to heaven. Thank God for that. But I guarantee you, everybody in here, you know somebody, at least, at least one person, if not many, based upon their testimony, if they were to die today, they would bust hell wide open. This ought to stir our hearts to want to go and share the gospel with them. Preacher, I've already shared the gospel with them numerous times. One more time. One more time ain't going to hurt a thing. That's right. I mean, one more time ain't going to hurt a thing. Amen. Well, I know they're going to reject it. Well, at least you can stand before the Lord and say, I've done my part. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But I guarantee you, there's folks in here this morning, you know people who were lost, and you hadn't shared the gospel with them. You need to do it now before it's too late. If not, they're going to be in this awful place called hell. And they will have no peace in their life. They will have no mercy. There will be no favor for them in hell. There will be no relationships for them in hell. And there will be no answered prayer for them in hell. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around here this morning. This altar is open. I want to encourage Christians all around the church to come down to this altar this morning and ask God to give you what you need to be able to be a witness for Him. 
Every one of us here this morning, we know people that are lost on their way to hell. And I think we as Christians, a lot of times, we're so secure in our salvation that oftentimes we forget that there's a lost and dying world outside these church doors. When's the last time you grabbed a gospel tract, handed it to somebody, and told them Jesus loves you? When's the last time you took a gospel tract when you went out to eat? And he left it on the table with the tip for the waitress. You don't know if she's saved or not. When's the last time that you called up somebody that you know is lost and told them Jesus loves them and that he's the only way to heaven? This altar's open, why don't you come? When was the last time that you went and you told your family that Jesus is the only way to heaven? When was the last time that you spoke up on the job and told them Jesus is the only way to heaven? When was the last time that you went to school and told your classmates that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Because if you have it, and if we don't share the gospel, this world will die and they will go to hell and they will burn and they'll never get out and their blood will be on our hands. Let's not get into this place of being stale and stagnant. Let's don't get into this place of complacency in the house of God, in our Christian life. There is a world. Let's not forget what our number one job is. It's not to grow the church. It's not to paint the walls pretty. It's not to put padded chairs in here. It's not to make the building look nice. Our number one job is to go into the world and share the gospel and tell those who are lost that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If we're not doing that, then we're not doing our job. If we're not doing that, then shame on us. Hallelujah. We're sending people to hell if we don't. we got to share the gospel, folks. What's missing in hell? There's no peace in hell. There's no mercy in hell. There's no favor in hell. There's no relationship in hell. There's no answered prayer in hell. But you know what I hope's going to be missing in hell? The one that you care about the most. The person you work beside every day. The person that you go to school with every day. I hope they're going to be missing in hell. You know how you can make sure they're missing in hell? Share the gospel with them. Tell them that Jesus came and He died and He was buried and He rose again and that He did it for them and that He took their sin and He died for them and He's the only way to heaven. You want to make sure that they're missing from hell? You've got to share the gospel with them. <clears throat> Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this day and all Your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your word and how you speak to us through your word. God, I pray that you stir each and every one of us up to be a witness for you. Help us, Lord God, to go out in this world and share the gospel with everyone we come in contact with. Help us, Lord, to do our part. Help me, Lord, to do what I'm supposed to do to share the gospel with others, please, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless y'all. We're dismissed. We've got a service.